Hey everyone, welcome back. So in today's video, we're going to go over actually Green Edge. Um, some of you have obviously been recommending that I do a deep dive on them, so we're going to do that today. We're going to go over uh, Stock Symbol Green, so Green Edge Generation. And as always, just so you guys are aware, not financial advice, obviously do your own research on everything that I post or anybody else posts on YouTube, obviously. I'm investing in the following coins and companies for full disclosure. And let's get into Green Edge here. So this is from their website right now. Um, as we're watching it go live. So Greenwich is obviously a Bitcoin miner. They have their own uh, facility in Dresden. I believe it's in New York. So it's clean power plus blockchain services for the future. And we'll actually get into, uh, there's not much information here as far as what they completely do. So we'll get into a little bit in their presentation. So here's a company presentation. This was from May, 2022. And we'll go over just some things here really quick. We'll get into the Q1 results, and then we'll also take a look at uh, the latest June results as well, production update, and then we'll get into my numbers on it. So Jeffrey Kurt is the Chief Executive Officer of Greenage, obviously. Here is their Greenage snapshot of hash rate. So in December of 2020, they were at 0.4 exahash, so 400 petahash roughly. In December of 2021, they were at 1.4 exahash, March of 1.6 exahash, and they are going to be going to approximately 4.7 exahash by the end of this year, uh, depending obviously if they can get the miners and if they can get the facilities up and uh, running with enough uh, megawatts to do so. So in 2020, they mined 1,146 BTC. In 2022, they mined 1,866 and so far this um, year, we'll take a look at the ex exact numbers, but right now they're reporting here in Q1, they mined 561. So if that holds true, they would be at approximately, what is that going to be? That's going to be uh, 2,200 or so BTC for the year if they continue to mine. Um, and then if they also increase their hash rate, that's obviously going to help them out as well. So they have obviously locations here. They got this Bartonsburg, South Carolina location in Dresden, New York. So Dresden, New York is their power generation facility. It's 106 megawatts of natural gas power generation capacity, at least 85 megawatts of mining capacity. And as of March 31st, 1.4 exahash or 17,000 miners were installed in that facility at that time. Spartanburg is a new one that they just purchased recently in December of last year. So at least 100 megawatt capacity when fully developed. They have a 175 acre industrial site with 750,000 plus square feet of industrial buildings purchased in December of uh, 2020. That can't be right. This should be 2021. Mining commenced December 12, 2021. So that's correct there. Over 60% zero carbon power, which is good. And re recently announced commencement of expansion in conjunction with state and local e economic development authorities. So that's good. And as of March 31st, they have 0.2 exahash, 200 petahash roughly and 2,000 400 miners installed. I think it's a little bit more than that now, but we'll get into the numbers, like I said. They're still looking to do a proprietary expansion opportunity, so exploring South Carolina expansion, Texas generation sites as well, Texas development sites, and then pipeline of additional locations in multiple states and provinces in the U.S. and Canada. So they're obviously looking to grow as well. So how are they different? So they are 100% in-house mining and energy cap uh, capability. So design, operate, maintain, perform, safety, and vertically integrated behind the meter power. So power generation, obviously, at their Dresden facility in New York. Mining infrastructure, uh, miners, obviously, 100% carbon neutral operations. So 100 carbon neutral operations since June of 2021. Pursuing 100 carbon neutral expansion sites, focusing on expansion locations with renewable or low, uh, low carbon sources of energy. And car carbon emissions from mining are offset through purchase of carbon offset credits registered with either the American Climate Registry or Climate Action Reserve. And then obviously a proven track record of success, approximately 1.6 exahash with 19,400 miners deployed. As of March 2022, successfully built and operated mines at two existing facilities. 561 Bitcoin already covered that, 1,866 in 2021. 3x growth in hash rate and electrical capacity in 2021. And then 3x growth in hash rate in 2022, which is also good as well. Ownership structure, don't really care about that. Q1 results, we'll get into this in the next uh, uh, next part of it here. But this is basically for Q1, so $23.2 million from crypto power. They also obviously generate some income from that as well. And support.com revenue also is added in there as well. I haven't really 
dived deep into it to find out what's going on with support.com and how are they affiliated with them. So if you guys have any information on them, hit me a comment down below. I'd love to hear it. Um, otherwise, I'll have to do a little bit more research on it. So here's the power market dynamics for uh, historical minor revenues for S19J Pros and then S17s. We can obviously see that it has been coming down here recently in the last couple months. Ever since basically uh, December of last year, it's been pretty much coming down in November. Uh, price has been coming down on Bitcoin, and that's obviously reflected here in this chart as well. Executive team, don't really, I mean, it's good to know it. Uh, you guys can read this over uh, by yourselves if you want to go to greenedge.com. I believe that's the website. They have all the information there. Financials. Um, obviously, nice growth over 2021 here in Q1, 240%. Cryptocurrency mining was up 158%. Bitcoin mine was up 163%. And ending hash rate was up 220%. So that's obviously pretty good growth here in the last year. Liquidity uh, is 261 in million, I guess. In millions, yep. On 331, so first quarter. Debt, uh, so they do have some debt, obviously, 170 million roughly at the end of Q1. And then they're also, with their New York uh, facility in Dresden, uh, as you all know, or you may know, New York uh, did a basically stop expansion on Bitcoin mining. What did they call it? They call this, uh, there's a term for that, but I can't think of it right now. Basically, no new permits will be allowed for any new Bitcoin miners. So let's see what this is affecting them at all. So New York State Department of Environmental Conservative submitted a request to extend Permit review period of for Dresden, New York facility. Facility operations continue uninterrupted in full compliance with current permit under SAPA extension. SAPA extensions are coming for renewal applications deemed complete and under final review. So according to the database of the New York SDEC website of 323 Title V permits issued and active in the state of New York, Greenwich is one of 166 Title V applicants. 51% currently operating under SAPA extension, so that's fine. Median duration of existing SAP extension is 595 days. Longest current SAP extension is 15 years. Uh, let's see, our existing Title V permit remains fully in effect and our operations address and continues without interruption. So that's obviously a good thing. That was obviously a worry for some people, obviously, with everything that was going on in New York. Uh, let's see here. That's it for that. So that's basically Greenwich in a nutshell right there. Let's take a look at their numbers here for Q1. And we'll get into my numbers as well. So current assets, about $96 million or so. And total current assets, $113 million. So it's a little bit of an increase from, obviously, last year. Debts, uh, or total assets, is $431 million. So that includes property and equipment of $292 million, which is a big one there. And a couple other millions here as well, deferred taxes, other long-term. So $431 million in assets, which is pretty good. I believe this stock right now is less than that. I'll have to double check that. But I think it's either close to that or even less than that. Uh, let's just take a look at it here really quick. Market cap is $142 million right now. Uh, that leads me to believe undervalued, but we'll get into it. Current liabilities, about $100 million or so. If they have long-term debt, current portion is $66 million. Uh, long-term liabilities is another uh, $103 million for long-term debt. And environmental liability, asset retirement obligations, lease obligations, other long-term liabilities as well, a total of $215 million. So they do have enough to cover everything that they need, obviously. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, total current liabilities is less than total current assets, which is good. So they have at least enough cash to pay for everything that they need to in the interim. Stocks don't care. Crypto, okay, revenue. So for the three months ended in... Q1, which is uh, March 31st, they generated 23.2 million in revenue from Bitcoin mining, which was 8.9 million the year prior. So that's obviously a good increase there. Power capacity and powering capacity has also increased a little bit. So total revenue was 37 million and services and other, which I'm not familiar with what they're doing there, was 8.5 million where it wasn't there the year before. So nice growth, obviously. So that's what we want to see. Cost of revenue for upper, um, cryptocurrency data centers exclusive of depreciation and amortization was $8.4 million. And then cost of revenue power and capacity exclusive of depreciation and amortization. I think what we want to do is combine these two and get about $12.4 million, which is about half um, to mine. And it, yeah, that would be t basically almost 49, 50% uh, net 
income from gross revenue. If my math is correct on that. And then obviously we have uh, earnings per share is a negative 0.01 cents where they had a 0.02 positive earnings per share the year before. And that is basically because of all the expenses and Bitcoin coming down, way down. So I mean, it's way less than what it was last year, right around this time. So it's kind of given that they're going to be a little bit under on that. So that's basically what I wanted to cover here on the financials really quick. That's kind of what we really look at. Now, if you want to go deeper into it, you can obviously get it from their website or from, um, I think you get it from the NASDAQ as well, if I'm not mistaken. But the other thing that I wanted to take a look at here, let's take a look. Where did I put it? Nope. I had one more. Where did it go? I don't know. I think that's it. We covered the, yeah, we covered everything here. The one that I wanted to go over was June. There we go. So June production update. <clears throat> June production update uh, is as following. So they approximately mined 230 Bitcoins in June of 2022 and 1,183 Bitcoins for the six months ended in June 30th. Hash rate capacity of approximately 2.5 X to hash from approximately 27,500 miners as of June as well. I have the miners correctly set up, but I have a little bit less hash rate on it. And maybe you guys can help me out with that a little bit as well. So 24% of hash rate capacity located at Spartanburg, South Carolina facility. And that was basically it for the update. At least they're providing updates, which is good. Um, some companies like Stronghold does not provide monthly updates, which hampers my ability to be able to provide you guys with accurate data monthly on these uh, miners. So at least I like the fact that they're doing this and they obviously have their own power plant. So that obviously helps out as well. So let's get into the spreadsheet that I have on them. We'll go over all the numbers and there is quite a lot of numbers there and we'll try to make sense of it all. So bear with me. So this is going to take a little, couple minutes to go over all this. So Based on the current market cap and the stock price, we can see that there's probably about 41.9 million, 42 million shares outstanding right now. Institutions will go down below a little bit. We'll take a look at those. Um, I don't have a lot of data on that because we just started covering it. So every month we'll update them. We'll see how institutions are either buying in or selling out of uh, green. And we can see that at least in the last, excuse me, in the last eight weeks or so, about eight weeks ago, you would be up 10%. If you bought four weeks ago, you'd be up 30%. And if you bought a week ago, you'd be up about 14% here. And then if you bought 12 weeks ago, you'd be down 29% right now. On it. Let me see if I can zoom this in so make it easier for you guys to see a little bit. There we go. Okay. So looking at the production rate so far in January, February, March, April, May, and June of this month, we're still waiting on July production updates. When that comes out, I'll do a video on them as well. I'll get it updated here. They provided in March that they mined 561 Bitcoins for the quarter. I used that number. How did I do this? I believe based on the X, based on the X hash that they had installed or reported what I could find on them, I used what they basically made for January, February, and March roughly and divided the, or came up with the numbers for BTC to equate to that same level. So you can see here value of BTC is uh, 7.35 million. We, and we have this here as well from the actual miners reported down below. And that coincides for the first three months. And then in April, they actually provided production updates. So we had 197 Bitcoins in April, 195 in May, and 230 in June, which was obviously a pretty, I think because they installed so many miners and they were possibly installed later on, that their BTC per peta hash was way down below 10. So we got 0 0.0964. Whereas in January, we had a pretty high number of 0.1373. This is really good. This is what we want to see. This just lets us know how efficient they are at mining Bitcoin. And based on the information they provided, obviously I had them at 23.8 million in revenue roughly. Based on just my numbers, they came in obviously at 23.232 million. In revenue, so I was off by 2.64% on the high side. Not too bad. I want to be at least within two and a half to or less. That's my goal. And then in April, May, and June, it looks like we have them at about 18.2 million. We are going to get the results, I believe, August 15th, which is going to be next week, if I'm not mistaken, or even this week. Um, let's see, we're 7th? Yeah, it'll be next Monday. Uh, we'll get the results, so we'll see how close I am on that based on the information that they, that they did provide on that. 
So that's where we are with all this. They do not hodl anything as far as Bitcoin. They keep uh, selling it as they basically generate it to fund operations and growth. And let's see here. For the first quarter, they were on average, they were at 0.13 BTC per petahash. And right now we're looking at the second quarter about 0.11 BTC per exahash. So that's obviously less. We want to see that go up a little bit in time. Okay, so here's what we got as far as miners. Uh, I went through all of their press releases and things like that that I could find on them and go through to see what they actually had. So the first known number was that they had 15,300 miners and they were at about 1.2 exahash. So based on that information, we came up with about 78.5 uh, terahash per miner on those on average. They could have been all over the place, we just don't know. Then later on, they reported that they had gotten another 7,150 miners and that they were mining approximately with those like 670 uh, petahash, something like that. So I just averaged that out to about 95 terahash per miner on those. And then we actually got a final um, news release that they purchased, here, let's see here, that they purchased uh, 22,500 of the S19G Pros. Originally they were buying like uh, 11,500, but they doubled the order to 22,500. And those are 100 terahash, I'm guessing. Uh, based on all the information here, that kind of gets us to their end result of 4.7 exahash, which is what we want, and 49,000 miners. And then they also reported in November that they were going to be a partner with Antminer, Bitmain, to get the S19J or S19 XPs, which are the 140 terahash miners. And they're getting those um, to 567 petahash, roughly. So that equates to about 4,050 uh, miners. On that. So we're really close to with the numbers here that they provided where they're going to be at and the num number, number of miners they're going to have. So then I started going from January, February, and trying to find any information I could find as far as what they're mining. They did provide that they were at approximately 1.4 uh, in January. Same thing for February, didn't get any information on it. On March, they provided that they were at 1.6 roughly, which we were pretty close. I'm at 1.591. They said approximately, so it could be up or low, lower than that. We're just kind of getting as close as we can to it with the numbers that we have here for the miners. April, they provided they were about 1.6. So with uh, 1, 19,600 miners, that's what we have here. Those are all getting installed. May, they were at 1.7 roughly, approximately, they said. So we got them at uh, 1.68 and with 20,400 miners. And those are all those miners work in there. And then in June, they provided they had 27,500 miners installed at approximately 2.5 exahash. But with just the information that I have for them, I got them at 2.385. So either I'm missing something here as far as what these miners are hashing at, or these miners didn't get installed here, and some more of these miners, but that still wouldn't really make much of a difference. Being a 95 and a 100 terahash, there's very small difference there. So unless... They're overclocking these miners here, getting a better hash rate on them, or either, or just overclocking in general. I'm not sure on that, but that's kind of where I have them as far as what they could be possibly making uh, for June. So July, we'll have to see. They did say that they have 200 miners that are still in transit, so those might get installed here. That that's going to add, a, you know, an insignificant insignificant amount to their bottom line here. But we're looking at July possibly being around seven seven point three million in revenue depending on how many more miners they get installed. So they do still have a ways to go before they get fully installed with everything that they have on order currently. All right, so that covers the miners. Let's take a look at institutions. So I check the institutions uh, from Webull every month as far as how many institutions, shares, percentage owned, and then uh, ratings as far as strong buy, buy, hold, underperforms, or sell, sold, sell and then the average price, high price, average price, and the low price on it. So our current uh, readings on those is 75 institutions, 2.7 million shares is owned, 20% of the company is owned by institutions. We have one buy rating, two hold ratings, a uh, price target of $10, and an average of 625 and a low of 325 as well. So that covers institutions. So here's where we get into the nitty gritty of it all, where we combine the last three quarters this quarter, so current quarter, we're kind of looking at it to be possibly 21 million. Obviously, we're only in July and in August now. So we'll see how they do in these next two uh, months to get to a more accurate number. Right now, it's just an estimate. If nothing has changed, Bitcoin stays where it's at. 
mining stays the same, then this is kind of what we're looking at, 21 million possibly for Q3. And then the prior three quarters, we're using the 18.21, which will get a more accurate number next week. And 23 million for Q1. And then we're using Q4, the 33 million here that they reported as well. So we're kind of combining it all together to get a, at least an idea of what they could possibly have, uh, you know, what the revenue was for the last four quarters. And currently it looks like they're about 96. They could be a little bit closer to that based on uh, September, you know, August and September still. They could be closer to 100 million, but right now we got them at 96 million, 97 million roughly. So if we use the 50% net income from gross revenue, which is kind of what it looks like on their mining part, remember I'm not counting any of their power generation revenue or other revenue that they have. This is just strictly on their Bitcoin mining. We would be at about 48, 48 million profit on it. And if we use the 15 PE on it, we would be at $17.33. Seeing that they are right now at $3.41, they are way undervalued in my opinion right now, as are the majority of the miners that I cover right now. But once Bitcoin starts pumping back up, these miners, well, Greenwich and the rest of the miners will start pumping up as well. And we've seen, obviously, when that happens, Mara, Riot goes up, you know, far more than the 15 PE. They can go up to 20, even even above that. So at 50% net income, we're looking at $23.10. And at 75% net income from gross revenue, we're looking at $34.65 on them. So undervalued, obviously, in my opinion. As always, please do your own research before investing in anything that I talk about. Um, this is just for entertainment for you guys to see what, how, kind of how I'm looking at the miners here and, uh, and the production and everything else. All right, so that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, like I said, there's a lot of numbers. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below. I always answer the comments. Um, what else? Uh, I already said, I think I said, if you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe, helps me out. And uh, spreadsheet is available to my Patreon members there. If uh, you want to get the spreadsheet, you can go there. You can get it there. And thank you to my Patreons for all their support. And I think that's it. It's going to be a busy week coming up. We got obviously the uh, minor updates for July as well coming up. There's still some that haven't provided it. And we also have some that are going to start reporting this week as well, their um, Q2 results. So we'll dive into those, see how those are looking. And we'll cover it all. So have a great day. I'll see you guys in the next one.